it's my birthday what's up everybody so i just turned 30 years old today and what i want to do for my birthday is give something back i want to share with you one resource that changed the way i do javascript for the better many many years ago um, and i want to share with you three things specifically from that resource um, that benefited me in my career in the hope that it would benefit you and yours on this my 30th birthday okay so with that let's just get right into it the thing i'm talking about is this book you don't know javascript by kyle simpson this book is unbelievable like so kyle wrote this book as far as i remember um, after getting rejected from a job where they were kind of like, yeah, you kind of don't know JavaScript. And it, this book seems to be his response of like, oh, I'll show you how I don't know JavaScript. So he wrote this book and it is, I mean, everything is explained in beautiful plain English and it has benefited me in huge ways. I want to share with you three ways it has, three things I learned about JavaScript that I didn't know before the book um, to help you in your career and also to maybe get you interested in reading it. It is free and open source. So if you want to read it, I'll put a link under the like button. Uh, but with that, let's get into it. The first thing is how does JavaScript execute? Um, that's what I learned, right? It's, it's um, because if you think about JavaScript, it's just a big text file. Okay, but how does that, you know, turns out that's what a compiler is for. A compiler takes a long text file like JavaScript um, and then breaks it down into little tokens that another program can understand called, and the, the token tree is called an abs abstract syntax tree. Another program takes this in and then generates machine code and then execute it, executes it in an engine. Um, the best way to visualize this compilation abstract syntax tree thing is using this tool called AST Explorer, where, so we have some code here. And we have the abstract syntax tree here. This is the compiler's output. So you'll notice we have a function declaration and a variable declaration. And if we look at like what tips is here, um, it's an identifier inside a variable declarator, inside a variable declaration. Similar for the args here. It's an identifier in an, inside an array params of a function declaration. So this syntax tree is given to a program that can understand it and then use it to further transform it into machine code and execute it in an engine. Pretty awesome. Um, using this, I was able to write code mods to convert like code from software A to software B, literally take in JavaScript and output different JavaScript. And I think you might be able to create some type of like React to solid JS thing or something with like if you get it. Um, and of course, code bases are complex and so it may not be possible, but transpilation is the process of like compiling code into a tree and then, you know, transforming it into something. Compile, transform, transpile. Okay. Um, so I learned this from the book. Excellent. Second thing that I learned um, is about the this keyword in JavaScript. I've seen comments on my videos from a lot of you asking me to explain this. This is that explanation. And I learned it from Kyle Simpson's book. So let's actually just look at it with code. Um, if we open the editor, um, you know, let's say we have a function a and we console.log this and then we call a what's going to happen um and we go here and okay so we, we've called it we're using nodemon um and what we can see is we have the global object um okay but why why is this the global object so this in in the simplest way possible it refers to the object that called it um and if we look here in the code um we called it from the global scope therefore boom it's a global object right um we can visualize this further if we call this function from some other object instead of window or the global object in node.js so if we do that let's go here and just wrap this in let's remove the call let's wrap this in set timeout um, and we'll say do this after a second or something save and so now if we come down here we this is the timeout object look it's this is the timeout in fact if we assign b to set the value of set timeout if we console log b as b um what we'll see is b is the timeout and a is also the timeout you see because the timeout called function um so this usually refers to something like that it gets more complex where we have another closure in our uh, called back to set timeout. So like if we come here and instead of like, let's remove this for some noise control, but what we can do is have another function here, B, let's say, um, and we console log this here and we'll call B. Now, notice we're not assigning this anywhere, right? The, this is just implicit. If we save this, um, what we see is A is the timeout and B is the global object. What? What? how how is b so b is being called um 
from Glow. What? So this has been a source of confusion for many, many years uh, for JavaScript developers. Um, and the solution, if, if you wanted to capture the timeout this inside your callback, you'd have to do some hacks. Like here, you have to basically do something like const um, self is this. So this, this, this now is from A, and then we do self if we want to get the timeout inside B, right? And so now we should have two timeouts, exactly. But this hack became very common in JavaScript. And to save us all from this and other hacks around this, we have arrow functions denoted by the fat arrow. The arrow functions just don't have a this. Best way to put it. They don't have a this. They use the this from some from what's surrounding them. This is some would call this lexical scope or block scope or whatever. It just uses the this from like the enclosing scope. Uh, let's visualize that in code. So if we come here and we say we replace this A with an arrow function, we also replace B with an arrow function right um and we just console log both of this is so we'll say a this and b uh gosh b this save that yeah they both don't have a this you see that's awesome no confusion but what if we wanted to get the timeout um let's look at how we do that we'd strategically use function declarations and arrow functions so if we want to get the timeout we can do this and now we know that this is going to be the timeout if b is an arrow function, then this is going to be the this from here, which is also the timeout. So if we save this, now we have a is the timeout and b is the timeout because the arrow function takes this. And of course, you can break everything by doing this. And now this is new. This is just, you know, it's the object that calls b, which is the global object or the window. And we're back to confusion, right? So this distinction between arrow functions or function keywords, um, this distinction between the this in that way or this in that, all of that becomes way clearer thanks to Kyle Simpson in this book. Um, the third thing that I learned was as uh, asynchrony and callbacks about them in general but specifically about callback hell and what that means um just to initiate us a little bit let's look at some callback full code so what we have is um let's say we just do a fetch right um which you know fetches a url and then get something um and then we yeah we do something awesome we we thing dot json and then we get something with stuff and we um, console log stuff, and then we, um, you know, just keep going, right? And some would say, sure. <laughs> some would say the nesting here is callback hell, but it's not. Um, the, the nesting, Kyle makes the case in the book that the nesting is kind of a red herring. And yes, it does make things hard to reason about. Like if you look at this, it is a little bit hard to reason about, but the real devil is in the detail of call order with asynchrony. Um, and to, to illustrate this, he puts an example in the book. I tweeted exactly this example from the book and got some funny responses. Being cheeky, I didn't specify there was asynchrony. Um, but here, this is my tweet. Um, feel free to follow. And I said, without cheating, given this code snippet, what's the order of execution? Let's assume each function calls its arguments. Um, I should have said, can I edit this tweet? I can't. Dang it. Um, I should have said, um, calls its arguments asynchronously. Anyway, so if do a calls this function inside that calls doobie and so on what is the call order of this i want you to pause the video um and and look at it and tell me what you think is the order of things called knowing that they they're called asynchronously okay so is it going to be a then b then c then d then e then f um if synchronous yes that's how JavaScript works. Um, you can confirm that with debugger statements. If asynchronous, the truth is different and we get into callback hell. Because look, keep in mind, um, this function, this anonymous one, is just a callback given to A. Um, similarly, this function is a callback given to C. Those callbacks can execute when the function wants to execute them. In an asynchronous world, usually the function will do something first that can take an indeterminate amount of time and then we'll call that function after it's done. You can think of it conceptually as, um, in this case, A will do something async. It will await something for a while. And then when that's finished, it will call its argument this thing, okay? Um, when working with asynchrony, call order gets really mix mixed up because here, this is not gonna happen as A, B, C, D, E, F um, in a synchronous world, but if everything is asynchronous and every callback is executed after something is awaited, uh, we have A, Follow my cursor. We we call do a and we immediately call do f. 
Then we go into do A and call do B. We call do C, we call do E, and then we go into do C to do D. So the correct call order is A, F, B, C, E, D. A, F, B, and, and notice, like, it doesn't come natural. That's really hard to think about. Oh, this is called then, this is callback hell. That is callback hell. The nesting, sure, but callback hell is when it's hard to reason about what's called when. Thankfully, we have things like async await and stuff to help. So yeah, that's how arrow functions directly help you with this. That's how async await directly helps um, asynchrony and callback hell. All of these taught to me by Kyle Simpson, who wrote this awesome book, You Don't Know JavaScript Yet. Um, it So this was a long time. This was many years ago that I read these things. I understood them. And it's been helpful. The book is free and open source. Again, link under the like button. But since then, I've had the privilege of meeting Kyle in person. Um, I would call him a good friend. We often talk shop about compilers and about new programming languages and all kinds of things. And I'm honored to be able to have met one of my heroes and call him a friend. And that gives me a lot to be thankful for on this, my 30th uh, birthday. How do you feel? Did, did these things resonate with you? Are they helpful? Let me know in the comments or at me on Twitter. Oh, and if you want to do something for me on my birthday, there's um, super thanks down there. There's like, subscribe, whatever. Um, or feel free to donate to any charity you want in my name. Um, and I'll take that. But hey, I want to really take a moment um, and thank you on, on the day that I, thir I turn 30. Um, you've been a part of my life, whether you know it or not, a part that I'm grateful for and a part that I hope to continue serving with high quality content. Um, thank you for sticking around. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. All right. Peace.